que não. Já viu tanta motinho do centro, né? Hum. I don't know. I guess it depends on whether I think she's going to actually listen. A piece of advice from old mom. It doesn't matter if children know what you're saying or listen. All that sometimes matters is that you speak. Even if they do not understand what you say now. Hey. Twenty years, a few decades, they may understand. But we don't have years and years. There is war coming, and they're either going to be convinced to participate or not. Can't just sit around debating it that long. planning for some ill fit to before baby no babies will live through this war you and me maybe yes maybe no but sometimes it's just good to not think about the bigger picture take a moment to focus on what you do have instead of what you could lose You know, back on Zanzibar, I met a guy who kept telling me the same thing. Wasn't helpful then either, but I think you would have liked him. <laughs> well, give it 10, 20 years. Maybe Boris's words make understand. She's probably just gonna walk in silence for another chunk of time. And at some point I assume it's getting too dark and too cold to do much. Yeah. After another three-ish hours, that should bring us to about ten o'clock, right? Ish? Yeah. Yes. Yes. But, uh, after the, those three hours, and over the course of them, Boris, you know, humming, singing songs in the old language, singing songs in other languages, basically just being a jovial big boy amidst the mountains and snows, he'll point out towards a, towards a large ice hill. There! We are here, we should sit down for a night. We can still make it to village. Twelve hour time period, but we need place. You'll know too cold to walk it during night. You do recall I made this trip almost every weekend for a year, right? I know. What? I cannot say obvious? Is there some kind of what is work? Work. Let's just go in the cave and just kind of just like grab his sleeve and just sort of pull him along. Not actually pulling him because she probably couldn't move him, but she's just like <laughs> bedtime. It's bedtime. Yes, bedtime. Bedtime. Where is the thing? Uh. There it is. I can't see stuff. Why are you trying to pull me? I only say truth. We go over here. Oh my god, it's so close. Well, zoom out. They are in the lower right corner. It'd be nice if I could pan. <laughs> You would. Else you I could be do? like all the way in the corner. I can switch it to nighttime. Whoa. <laughs> Hello. 
Oh my god. <laughs> it's very nighttime shit. Yeah, I wish it could be less nighttime. <laughs> cool. I like the snow. <laughs> Hello, Shaylin Cursor. Oh, where are you? Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. I can't move my token that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Just become Fiala's nose. Okay. <laughs> I really want the game to run the audio. Wow, Boris, oh you're glowing. Oh my god! Holy crap. Make lights. Whoa. Poggers. Poggers. Why are you fooling me? I can walk, I know how to walk. She'll let go. Why are you always so sad? I don't know that that question has a short answer. Well, my mother? we have a lot of time, as he looks at a watch that doesn't exist on his wrist. <laughs> and Honestly. I am willing to hear stories. That's alright. Bah. You are no fun. I still hear I just kind of keep talking. And as you come over to the big giant ice sheet. You stare up and around it, and it's just a pure, solid crystal of ice. And you see Boris walking towards this, a 15-foot hole under the base of it. Ah. And I have a different one. A thing. Yeah, a thing. And let me go get the token. Boop. It's me. It's you. It it's Boris. Dark. Of course it's dark. In a cave. Indeed. Darkened. As you approach and enter, you feel warmth. A heat emanating from underneath. Like I said, here is hot spring. Natural. Should be good place for night rest, yes? Yeah, I didn't know this was here. I do <laughs> wander further in. <laughs> and as you draw closer, you hear the running water. The I assume this is wall, or is this just like a ledge? You're higher up. Okay. Like, you would be about equal with that pool right to your left. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is a little higher, and then it kind of goes downwards from there. Looks like someone is excited! He calls out. <laughs> you hear his voice bouncing off the walls and down into the cave. I'm intrigued. I'm just gonna hop down. <laughs> just hop right into the hot spring? No, she's gonna, she's gonna hop down onto the ground around it and, like, put her hand in it. It's very warm. Comfortable. It's very warm. Yes. Comfortable. She pulls her hand out and shakes all the water off. Yes, that would be what is implied by hot spring. As he gives you a big smile. I see. I see someone else is capable of stating obvious. Sure. She'll uh, stick her face in it. <laughs> you feel the gentle bubbles from the um, underground gases rising up through the water and brushing against your fur. And she pulls her face out, shakes off. Boris will head around. Hear the water disturb a little. It sounds it. 
Blech, it sounds. It is it's good to drink! I taste no animal excrement or other foul materials! <laughs> hmm. And she'll, uh, she'll check her water skin to see if she already has water. And if it needs refilling, she'll refill it. Uh, I have no idea the contents of your water skin. <laughs> Neither do I. It doesn't- Sim kept everyone's full, so... It should be- Yeah, let's assume there's no lack of water with an infinite water supply. <laughs> yeah, so unless you've been drinking it on the walk here, it should have been full when you teleported it. I mean, she's been walking for, like, five hours, so she's probably drank some. And you'll hear yeah. Boris trudge through the stream. It's safe to drink, puts his feet in it. Yeah, like, what the heck? <laughs> and that's why you get it from up here, not down there. Where he, he did, getting... he got it from the waterfall. Ugh. This looks like good place to set up camp. Indeed. And I'm roll sure. me perception. Perception. Uh... As you look around in the dark of the cave, which of course to you doesn't look dark at all. It just looks black and white. You can see the leftovers of a campsite. Huh. Sitting around. Was this yours? Yes, first time I came in, only had enough energy to sleep. Never tested the waters, but I can confirm are good for bathing. I thought you said it was good for drinking. It is good for both. It is hot spring. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna like be that that calculation lady <laughs> for a minute. And then just be like, never mind. She's gonna set up her sleeping bag thing like in this little cornery area. If it is good for bathing, it is good for cleaning. And if it is still good for drinking, well then you do not pick stones with hairs. I suppose. And she says that having no idea what that means. Ah! Good, you understand. I must be getting better at these analogizings. Yep. Should we set up a fire? You see him light a little standing torch? Yes, I will set up fire. As he sets down his giant backpack. Anything in particular you wish to eat? Meat? More meat? Lots of meat? What stuff did you bring? And you see him undo the pack. Just about every meat you could think of. Except turkey. She'll uh, point to one. And then grab it. You grab random meat number five from the Yay. pack. My favorite of the random meats. Mm -hmm. mm, random meats. Random oh. number five. Tastes random. <laughs> Tastes like meat. Tastes like dice rolling. Wow. Dice rolling. You might be able to cook it with the ghost apples. Gamba meat. <laughs> Roll on D100. <laughs> Roll on the meat table. Oh, Wild yeah. meat table. Hell's gonna Hell's gonna pull out the twins. Be like, I think you might like these two. What is this? As he's trying to like fumble his way through the dark. Like what? Two? What am I looking? For? She, uh, she holds up the two little golems. It's like, I still need to figure out what exactly to do with them, but 
They've been sticking around me for a while now. You have more babies than just baby? Why didn't you show me little Mylon keys? I am, just now. <laughs> well, you should have done sooner! As he takes them from you in his big giant hand. Hello, little one! You are so small! Oh, look at you! What is this? This is orb. His eye? It does not it's a... Uh, I believe the term used was core. They call, what are they called? What are they called? Gylums! Gylums? But there is the word that he used. Yes, yes. Gylums. You are small little things. Your body is made of sand. <clears throat> you do not look very strong. How can you build muscle? Beautiful muscle with body so... So, so, so sandy! I guess I would probably have them sent back home if I don't end up going myself. I see. And what would they do at home? Get bigger stronger do whatever it is that golems do golems. admittedly I don't know much about them golems of sand can get bigger and stronger and land of ice and water hmm Sorry, I'm arranging things. That's good. Um, what'd you say? Uh, nothing. I was waiting for responses. Response Are the golems to... doing anything? They're just looking at Boris, curious. <laughs> he is much bigger than anything they've ever seen before. <laughs> in terms of, well, what they've seen before. No, I didn't want to move it. I wanted to do the thing. I'm sorry, what were you waiting for a response to? Uh... I don't know, Boris said something about them getting stronger in the ice place. And Hello was like, what? He was he was asking how they can get bigger and stronger when they're made of sand in a place made of nothing but water and ice. Oh, he <laughs> Okay. Uh she's just going to be like, Yes, that's my point. I'm saying if I stay here, they have to go back there. Oh, you said go back home. I thought you would leave them here. This is home, yes? Not theirs. Ah. I am guessing they come from uh, Zanzibar. Yeah. Yes. And he'll place them gently onto the ground. Go, little ones. Play with what you play with. Make fun, make merry. <laughs> and they look back at you with the same confused sense. <laughs> She's just like, I don't understand him either. No. And Boris will get the fire pit going. Mm -hmm. Make it big and bright. Kill a little attempt to convince the golems to play. Uh, 
roll for play. <laughs> like coming? some sort of role play. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Mirror. Is it Arcana? Do they play with magic? Because they're magic beeps. Well, I was completely joking. Oh. Yeah, and Boris is just gonna go around and set the campsite up. Yeah. Is there like a small rock somewhere in the cave that Yella can like play catch with them with or something? Uh, roll investigation. Investigation. Yes, you find a small rock to play catch with. Cool. She uh, she waves it around to get their attention, like tosses it back and forth between her hands, show them what to do, and then like. Toss it over to one. No catch. The volleyball pitches it back. <laughs> she tosses it at John Ray, and the rock goes through his body and just clinks on the other side. <laughs> Getting them huh. both to look at the rock. They both pick it up and look at you, and then they just Split the rock in half and look at you. <laughs> like now they... throw it back. And they just stare at you, and then they look at the rocks, and each of them takes their halves and splits them in the quarters, and then looks back at Gala again. Hmm. Interesting. Exactly like they were taught to do at Granny's head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's gonna give him, like, a keep-going gesture. <laughs> she's gonna see how small they can make them. And can they make it so fine that it becomes sand and they can get bigger? Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're both holding... Both of their hands are full between the two of them. So they just look. And then you see a third arm extend from Quinn's chest, and it grabs the left quarter pebble and splits it again. <laughs> and then he just looks at her. <laughs> and then John Rhee starts to copy him. She'll, she'll take the smaller ones from them and like set them aside to free their hands. And they'll keep going on this process of splitting rocks. <laughs> Constantly looking for Chala's approval. <laughs> She's giving it. Uh, can I? Ah. Uh, why can't I select the danger voices? Ah. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, yeah, and you'll sit there while Boris sets up camp, and you'll sit there until they have functionally just made gray sand. Yeah. At this point, she should, like, scoop it up and pour it over them. Yeah, you come over to this gray rock dust. As they're just getting increasingly more frantic, the pieces are becoming too hard to, like, split. <laughs> so they're just trying to, like, pick up individual grains of sand, and they're trying to, like, <laughs> bring them really close to eat their own core. And, like, they're trying to look in between their appendages. And they're trying to just split it. The babies feel like they are failing at their task. They don't seem to be able to get it small enough. The instructions remain the same, thus task uncompleted. <laughs> Kiala scoops up the dust mound. Yeah, she wants to see if they can absorb it. Uh, 
who do you bequeath such a boon to? Uh. Can, uh, Quinn? Uh, you pour the gray dust over top of Quinn, and it binds to his body little streaks of gray. <laughs> He's going through a phase. <laughs> and Quinn just starts looking around at the gray streaks in his body, and you see the sand moving through his arms and then back into his body and then into his leg. And then he takes a proud little, like, hands-on-hip stance. Because clearly he has done the task successfully. Mother has <laughs> granted him the gift. To which John Reed just belts into, a, like, a little sand mound. <laughs> makes sad little beep-boop noises. <laughs> yeah. She's gonna get another rock. Be like, now to be even... You do have to do it again, and she hands it to Quinn. <laughs> you have to help your brother. Quinn starts splitting the rock. Dutton splits it into sand and then pours it over his own head. <laughs> <laughs> Takes his proud stance again. <laughs> She's gonna shoot him a glare. He stands there, triumphantly confused. Yala's <laughs> infamous in intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna... Yeah, she's roll gonna... intimidation! <laughs> she... Meanwhile, she's pointing at, a uh, Genre, and she's like, Share. Intimidation. That thing I'm super good at. See? Look at how good at it I am. <laughs> it wasn't in that one. <laughs> yeah, it was in fact twice as good as last time. <laughs> so Yala points at John Ree and tells Quinn to share, trying to be as intimidating as possible. And Quinn walks over to John Ree and takes his rock and turns it into sand. And then pours it over his own head. I've created a monster. The rich get richer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in this case. Hmm. Poor John Ree has lost a will for life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm debating having Yala just like lop off one of Quinn's arms. Like, share. Mm -hmm. We do not practice capitalism in this tribe. <laughs> Communi sand communism, maybe? <laughs> She's gonna just sigh, and she's gonna like, uh, she's gonna take a rock for herself and <laughs> attempt to break it. How big is the rock? Uh, I mean, I don't imagine any of these are super huge. I I'm imagining you've been picking up like pebbles, because they are pebble yeah. sized babies. Yeah. So you stand there and trying to. Crack a pebble in half with your bare hands. <laughs> no, she's got she's got like a second rock and is like, wham. Just, just literally sitting there going. Yeah, whichever one is slightly softer material should break, and she'll use the other one to just mash it. She's making mashed potatoes, but rock. <laughs> rock potatoes. And you just hear Boris hop down from the ledge above with a semi-thunderous thud. I am back from lightning lamps. What are you doing? Is this some kind of musical accordance with babies? Hello, babies. Are you making music with the mother? Well, Quinn seemed to be able to absorb some of the rock dust 
into himself. Doesn't seem to want to let any go to the other. So I gotta make more on my own. She's gonna give it to him, because he seems more likely to be able to do it. And he takes the two pebbles from you, and he kind of sets them one on the top of the other, in between his two big fingers. Sets his other hand below that, and you just see him squeeze, and you just hear the rocks go... Cool. And she'll, uh, she will apply to Jeanry. <laughs> share because he does not know how. For example, he'll offer it to Quinn, and before Quinn can take it, Boris will put a big finger on top of his core and push him back. We bring to friends. We help one another. The strong must help the weak so that they can also become strong. Come here, little one, and he'll just, with his free hand, pinch like John Rees or uh, Quinn's hand and pull him forcefully along to John Ray and then place the sand on the pinched appendage and put it on John Ray now yield and he's just taking his fingernail and pushing the sand down Quinn's arm into John Ray easy sharing Give resource from you have many to those who have less. It is helpful. And we like to help each other. Yes, we do. This basically blue screens the two of them as they just kind of stare at him. But then you see them stop for a second after they separate. And they kind of just start picking up small little rocks, breaking them down, and then they start pushing the piles to each other. Well, that is a kind of circular way to get to the point, but at least now they know not to steal from each other, yes? I hope. Children are confusing. That was the end of the statement. I know. Oh, okay. It was very quiet. Mm -hmm. I hope they come back as two different colors of sand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all- I just imagine they're like a nice little swirly <laughs> pattern. They're like Napoleon ice cream! They're like when you mix, like, different colored, like, Play-Doh together, and it just becomes like a weird met- like, weird <laughs> mix. Mmm. But only if you half mix it, otherwise it becomes this ugly brown. Oh, shall we leave them to doing that? Go make meat. What are making, my lunky? She just holds out out. Holds out mystery meat number five? Yeah. Ah, yummy! As Boris carries over his big backpack of meat and starts stringing up, like, sausage links and entire legs of, of random animals. We shall eat good this night. Yes? You're welcome to. I'm not too hungry. Why? You eat the big meal before you come home? Not exactly. Just not all that hungry. And she munches on some of her stuff. Keep full belly. 
If you do not, it make journey difficult. I think I know how much I need to eat. Food is beautiful, yes! How are you doing, babies? As he turns around to the golems who are just picking out little rocks from the wall and sanding them, eroding them away. They are small. Lucky. They are small, cute little things. Indeed. I'm sort of glad they're here and not back with the one who originally made them. Someone I forgot they did that. Ah, who did make them? As far Zanzibar. as I Zanzibar what? makes golems? Yeah. If he is big, spooky, scary man, why does he need make golems? Especially things so small and weak. He doesn't tend to want to do things for himself. Uh, that's what... That's what I'm here for. Now, how does big, spooky, oogie boogie man manage to not do things for self? And yet, still be so scary oogie boogie. Well, when you have that much power, why would you do anything? You can make just about anyone do what you want, and if they don't, you wipe them off the face of the earth. But how does one get so much power if they do not do things for self? He's old. With just... all that social security is good. <laughs> you just see him about to take a bite, and then he stops and gives you a, a strange look. I mean, really old. Like, imagine the oldest person you know, and then stop thinking of them because that wouldn't even be on the same scale. I have known many old things. Things tend to not get stronger when they get older. Well, whatever he is, isn't a typical thing. It's quite far out of my level of understanding. And this Oogie Boogie Man that is also an island and also everything else, uh... Big like Boris? Is he small like babies? Mm. Is he visible to eye that is naked? He's tall but drastically emaciated. Something I don't understand. If you have so much power, you should be able to at least eat. But I suppose maybe it's just how he wants to look. Uh, and you would think he might want to look like he is in pain and starving because it makes him feel good to be in pain? No idea. And remind me again, uh, you say High King is dead, right? Because of big war? Yes. Huh. Run me through all of this again. Take me on race through it. Long, long walk. You plan on believing it this time? I plan on attempting to understand what you are saying this time. 
we will worry about fully believing when thing makes sense. Well, that's just the problem. It doesn't make much sense to me. And yet, this is the place I am right now. I have something I have to do, and that requires talking people into it. Something I can't do much, especially not people like you, or like Jadia. I don't know what's going to happen. thoughts as he stares into his drumstick of deliciousness and you are certain that this is not bump on head as far as I know I think I'd recall an injury that's that traumatic and I guess I just can't imagine the amount of time that passed all being fake. Sure, a mind can fill in a gap here and there with fantasy, but any single piece that you take out of this makes the whole thing fall apart and well. I can't imagine that everything that's happened since I left here in the first place is all just a lie. Do not think that it could be massive amounts of stress, no? I'm not sure why my mind would generate more new stress in response to old stress. Could be to try and make sense of it all. But it doesn't make sense. Minds do not always make sense. After all, you have been away for quite a while. You left when Kuno was basically just born. And then, well, Kuno is light in world. No one denies that, but, well, and he kind of, he looks at you. But you know, he's not looking at you. Things okay. preceded Kuno that were less than you. Do you as the player get what he's trying to say? Yes. Okay. I think so. Because he's looking at her cloak. Mm hmm Yeah. Even before that, well... There are many tribal wars around here. Things happen. It is not uncommon when you have been around as long as I have to see people with brains that are not broken, but are not whole piece of rock. I am not necessarily saying that it is definitely you for certain, but, well, you leave with a lot of stress, and you come back telling me now world is exploding, or imploding. Which one is go outward, make boom boom? Exploding? Ah, yes, exploding. Commonly strange language. You 
could be completely right. The whole world could be melting down, and I do not know. But what is more believable? That one individual is having a rough time in headspace, or that the world is melting down? I... I don't know. And that is what adds fuel to a fire of mine. <laughs> She's just gonna curl up again. He finishes the meat off his drumstick and lays the bone next to him. Come here, my lord. Come sit on Boris's lap. No, thank you. I guess Boris must stink. I smell pretty good to me. And he shoots I would you. die of laughter if Halo's like, not gonna lie, that's pretty cringe of you to ask. <laughs> cringe. Cringe. And he, and he just shoots Yala a, a playful smile. She's not looking. And thus not responding. You are too hard on yourself. And he takes off his coat and he sets it down. No matter what this case, I am sure things will be fine. It is very rarely, almost never as bad as we wish to make things out to be. That is why you must learn to relax. Enjoy the moment you're leaving. Like Boris, we are in middle of hot springs. It is not cold, it is in fact very warm. And I am due for a nice soak. So that, as he sets his hand down with a thud, is what I shall do. If you need me. I am going to be soaking in these beautiful hot springs. <laughs> ah, this is long overdue for muscles. And you're just gonna see him climb up the wall in his under in his under not underwear, but underwears. Like the undershirt and the underpants. But not the underpants. <laughs> Common is a strange language. The, oh, the pants. Boris, <laughs> Boris is in his bikini now. Boris no pantsu. Boru boru no pantsuru. Instead of saying yeehaw, they say hi ye. <laughs> He's not from Boris's. He is be. in fact be like from Tosterous huh? things. And you'll just see. And if you choose to look, you'll see him climb up, and you'll just hear him go, Wee! With a big splash and a spout of water rise up into the, rise up into the cave. The water sloshing out and down the rocks, to which John Ree and Quinn scuttle away from the water with fear. Perhaps they remember splashing water and it spooks them. Rip. Spa splashing water and shaking ground. Howling winds! Whee! And they run over to Hyala and force their way onto her lap. She'll just hold them, pat their heads, pat their sandy little noggins. What the Hyala thinking? Uh, not good things. <laughs> Share with the class. I mean, 
He keeps telling her she might just be crazy, so now she has to seriously consider that. Did I just imagine a cowboy and a famous <laughs> child? Yeah, pretty much. Is Nim an allegory for my own childhood traumatic experiences? Nah, those are different experiences. Is Samson, Is Samson an allegory for how my brain doesn't work? <laughs> Is Samson an allegory for the person I'd rather be? Confident, capable, and not overly reliant on the responsibilities others place on me? Is Samson more just the just a figment of my imagination and all the nightmare I've had to endure my entire life? But yeah, uh congrats to Boris on making her dissociate. <laughs> It's a very, language. it's a very large pill to swallow. <laughs> yeah, so is the pill that, oh hey, you might just be crazy and have made up everything you just said. And, and I was thinking he was gonna like, ask about the other people, but now he doesn't think the other people exist. <laughs> For now, at least. Until Yala can... If Yala can prove it! <laughs> Actually, that's a good idea. Can. She'll, uh, she's gonna pull her bag out. And she's gonna pull out the letter that Nim gave her. She's gonna read it, like, 43 and a half times. All of a sudden, it looks like Yala's handwriting. <laughs> 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 oh, that'd be great. Pulls There's out the just... metal, it's just Yala's name five times. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even gold, and there's not even a diamond in it. It's just like a rock and a... In, just shoved into a pendant of wood. Gosh. Oh god, that'd be so twisted. <laughs> this game is um, evil. Hey, Yala! <laughs> she hears from behind her as Nib and Samson are there. Ah! <laughs> Y'all, I know you've had a hard time, but you can't be thinking about getting. <laughs> I love the idea that they come back in her like crazy mental state, and Nim just has Samson's voice <laughs> because that's extra funny. <laughs> Y'all, you look like you done seen a ghost. Why are you looking at me like that? It's your buddy Nim. Yeah, Yala, what seems to be the matter? Ah! Oh my god, Samson is just, Samson's just nim-sized, and in the wild, and just in, um, magic clothes, and nim Wait, let's have, like, a pink elephant's moment on her <laughs> Just hallucinate your non-existent friends. But yeah, while Hyala contemplates her own existence. Maybe I'm just a sheet of paper in some sort of game. <laughs> in some sort of game that is sorted in gaming. We're gonna go back to the Tower of Zanzibar. Why are the tokens transferring so slowly? There we go. And while Nim is... I, I just set those up with the information I had. It's like the afternoon. It is not quite 10 o'clock. I'm trying to weave these time strands together. But the sun is setting. And, um... Y'all are in Zanzibar's room and he's in the other place. I'm imagining you two are doing the stuff to, like, wrap up the day. While the golem I'm sits in the corner. I mean, Nim did want to, um... Nim's on hour it. four of bubble bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just hour four of... Every hour... Oh, that's like... cheating! She can just deprune her skin yeah, so she I can stay in forever. Yeah, I was just thinking that, I'm like, damn, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> man. Like, after hour one, she's like, oh man, I should... 
probably get out. I imagine at any point Zanzibar is going to start yelling for me. And then she's just like, wait a minute. No. No, I want hour two. <laughs> yeah. Hour so two comes you around. You guys have I to realize Nim actually has never made her own bath before, so she had to figure out how to do that. But oh, I thought my. you were the ultimate homemaker now. Well, what part of making a home is making a bath? Drawing a bath. A hey, part of it, you, you numbskull. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something else. Like I didn't, and then you had that little pause, and I was like, wait, what the hell? <laughs> I, okay. In my defense, I almost said numbskull. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm like, does that get that? Does that convey the type of insult that I want? Because <laughs> I feel like a nim skull and a dumb skull <laughs> offer two very different things. You nim skull, all you think about candy. Dude, you... we make glasses on nim. So let's see, we got we got nimrod, nim skull. Uh, I'm sure I can. I sure I can make a. Yeah, point being is Nim took a bit to get the specifics down. She absolutely made a mess. I assume when you go in there, there's just bubbles everywhere. Yes. Yeah. It's not a mess if it's for cleaning. <laughs> That's funny. And Zanzibar will just be sitting on a throne of his own creation in his brooding <laughs> basically just looking out out the window across the sands of Zanzibar and he'll just turn his head slightly towards the back wall <sighs> showtime and he'll make the throne disappear just as a portal in the wall opens up just small enough for, you know, a small creature to come through. And Snowdrop will come bursting through the wall and up onto Zanzibar's shoulder. And Zanzibar will just turn ever so slightly. And the word Y will just come through the portal as he shuts it immediately. And in the silence of the room, he'll turn to Snowdrop and say in Terran, Very good, my little friend. I knew I could leave this up to you. What a good little boy you are. And he'll just start going, just doing the gitchy gitchy goo thing on Snowdrop's chin. Little chin scritches. Would Samson have heard the why? Yeah, if he's standing there, he would have heard that. Zanzibar will turn towards the staircase and see you. Hello, Samson. Hey there, Zanzibar. And Snowdrop, you're back. Yes. Samson's going to try to, like, eye up a uh, Snowdrop a bit. I, I thought you said he was getting some. He did. I don't, I don't see nothing. Is it invisible? It is a who, and who is the interesting part. Who? Oh. oh, Samson, that should be easy. Uh, the only uh, interesting... I know I heard... I know I heard someone else's voice. It wasn't Snowdrop. Of course it wasn't, as Snowdrop just sits on the shoulder and just, just lets out a yawn and goes... <laughs> hmm. Was that... Is that your friend? Yes! The only other interesting person besides you five. Thanks to Celeste's little blunder and my early involvement, I got more than what I needed to know how to toy with that individual. You said you wanted mm. the most valuable thing in Evangor. Why not the only useful person in that entire town? Hmm. I'm at the confines of our arrangement. 